My name is Kathy Ducey, and I'd like to welcome you here to my studio in the Windsor train station. We'll be spending most of our time across the tracks at the Windsor Art Center, taking a look at my work and the current show at the Windsor Art Center entitled Horizons Transitions. So let's walk across the tracks to the actual art center for the exhibition. So welcome to my exhibition, Horizons Transitions. And I titled it such because I'm looking at old and new works that I have that talk a little bit about that aspect of how I create a landscape. We're starting here with some of the very oldest ones, these charcoal drawings, which date from 1997. This painting also um, dates from the early 2000s. And then throughout the exhibition, they're interspersed old and new pieces. In this corner, you see a selection of small charcoal drawings that are from a series that I did in 2015 of a drawing a day, literally a drawing a day for an entire year. And this would be the third year I did that. I did it again in 2007, excuse me, and 2009. And again, this is 2015 and you only have 25 of them here. Each day I go to the studio for, and it became a routine, do a little tiny piece, I tape it down on the table and make a smudge with charcoal, see where it takes me. So I have no preconceived idea of what landscape it's going to be. It just evolves on its own. So one of my concerns throughout my painting career has been to capture change and movement in a landscape, and how do I go about doing that? And so in a, a painting like this, which is entitled Summer Breeze, I'm trying to somehow show you the wind, show you the viewer wind. And so and this one's a good way to see where I try to do that with brush strokes, by the direction of the brush stroke, by making the brush strokes visible so that they serve a function, the mark making serves a function in getting across that idea of wind. So in this next piece, movement is also and the brush strokes are very important, again, to show the clouds moving across the sky, and you'll see the brush strokes here, very visible, but also in, in this case with the horizon line that is tilted, and how that creates movement in another way for you, the viewer. Are you tilted? Are you walking? Where are you? So thinking again about where you, the viewer, are, and the role that horizon line can play in putting you in the landscape. So we can push the horizon line way back, um, lower it down, or we can eliminate it altogether, as in the small piece on the bottom left. And how that affects where you, the viewer, are in the landscape. Well, you may have noticed that I like large. Another reason to have a studio outside my home. But I also like to work really small. For some reason I, I can't do something in between. It's either going to be big or really little, like the little pieces you see up here. But what amazes me is that the little pieces can still capture a really huge landscape. And I like the fact that we have this little piece and then to the right, a really big piece, 24 inches by 72. So most of the small works have very little paint on them as well, especially those that are done on paper. The paper can't hold up under repeated layers of oil paint. And it does have to be primed beforehand. Um, but I enjoy the fact that I have to be quick. I have to just put it down and be done with it and move on. For me, less is more. So anytime I can do a painting in one sitting, I feel great. I'm going to mention again something I, I said earlier, and that is that none of these works are site-specific. 
So when I start a canvas, I might start with just a color. And so the three works here on the left are a good example of that, where I mixed up some color that maybe I saw on the way into the studio or I just remembered, and I tend to want to use it all up. And so I always have multiple canvas or pieces of paper available to me. And so here I'm playing with that color in three different landscapes. Actually, I end up with the same colors in all three, not just this kind of mauve color that I created. Um, but that's the way a painting will start. So people often ask me why I paint and what I like about painting. And I have to say that I paint and draw for, I guess, what could be called selfish reasons. I do it because I like the creative process itself. Um, creating something out of well, nothing, just paint strokes or a pencil line, and it's really magical how it becomes something else to the viewer, to the mind's eye. And so here on this wall, you can see some examples of creating the illusion of time, a place, maybe a season, passing the shadow runners, and 